Thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. These are six scenes that I stamped out in the previous video as far as um, how to start a scene, you know, and we kept it fairly simple in terms of uh, having a couple different elements within a scene, a Lakeside Cove stamp and the Milky Way, a moon and a lighthouse, a cabin and a moon, watermelon clouds, and the snowy bank, and a rising moon, which is the same moon that's been used up in that scene right there. But anyways, I love to finish off cards. I think compositions look fine as is. Some people just like doing compositions that aren't really into the coloring or the finishing aspect of it, and that's fine too. But for me, I really like to bring in these different tones, and I think it kind of sets an emotional quality to the scenes, a mood, you know, by bringing in all these different types of saturated colors and richness that are achieved by it. These all happen to be on the glossy card stock. But anyways, I my goal was, I know, six cards. One, you know, a couple of them have different color schemes, you know, slightly different color scheme here, but this one's very different color scheme. But my goal was to do all this within uh, 30 minutes, and that was kind of unrealistic. It ended up taking me one hour, but I have six finished cards here in terms of the color schemes. So spending 10 minutes on each card, doing the, applying the color wasn't really too bad, I think, you know. And what I'll do in another video is I'll add on some little flourishes with some gel pen highlights, and uh, maybe I'll pull out my uh, Dr. Martin's uh, bleed proof light and add a little bit of splashing, uh, you know, paint to these areas like around these rocks with the crashing waves or at the base of the waterfall with the churning waterfall. Even can even add some stars up in the sky, kind of in a random splatter paint touch, but I'll figure that out. I'll see what uh, these are saying to me. Uh, tomorrow probably when I get around to that. But uh, anyways, if you watch this video, I hope you enjoy the, uh, the toning process and just how fast it can really go um, with a certain methodology that I use, just working through the lighter tones into the darker tones. Like I said, I mean, if this scene right here was all blue, I probably could have done all six scenes in about, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes in terms of the toning process. Like I said, the compositions were already established in the previous video of just building the composition. But um, as far as the colors go, and really going through a full, you know, um, value scale of a given hue, you know, these can come around fairly quick. So, thanks for watching, and hope you enjoy um, the coloring process. Okay, we have six scenes here. Composition's pretty well stamped out and finalized, including the foreground imagery, which in most of my videos I don't do until the end, but for the sake of the last video, just showing people how to approach composition and uh, kind of the structures within their scenes, how to put them together in a very easy way in terms of kind of just sticking with kind of a, a narrow um, range of imagery distances, okay? Sky and land, basically. Now, I did put the uh, the foregrounds in, so I guess you can call that like three layers of um, depth within a scene in terms of the field of view. Um, but anyways, um, I have these stamped out here, and, um, you know, the fun thing for me is finishing these types of scenes off, so... I didn't know if I was going to do that or not, but um, over the past couple of days I've been looking at it and posting the video, you know, and taking a look at these scenes, and for me, um, getting a scene to this point, you know, in terms of compositionally, it, it kind of, it, it really compels me to, uh, you know, to throw down some ink on these scenes and to uh, kind of finish them off. So here's my challenge here to myself, okay? I'm going to try and finish all of these within, I don't know, maybe a half hour or so, 
we'll see what we can do. We're going to have to do it kind of in a mass production style, so I'm going to be using some reinker fluid, okay? This one's the, uh, the Adirondack Lights, otherwise known as Seashells, Peach Bellini. What I'm doing is I'm laying, I'm pouring out some of the lighter tones that I'm going to be using kind of as my foundation colors, okay? Um, kind of a tan color and definitely a blue color. Blue is going to be used in a lot of these, so I'm just using the reinker fluid. If you happen to have things like distress inks and reinkers in that, that you know the distress inks are really fantastic for their their hue in terms of being a foundation coat. That's not what they were designed to do, but um, they work great for that because they're all kind of light in tone and the Ranger inks are the, um, like for Distress, you know, Ranger is the same manufacturer as the Adirondack Light, so I find they have a similar consistency in terms of the thickness of ink, okay? But any one of those would work just fine. I would go with a lighter tone if you have it, you know, um, the tumbled glass one is a really good one. Okay, this is blue. A scene like this one, we want our moon to remain nice and light. All right, looks like I got some ink on my finger. Um, and I'm gonna want this rooftop to remain a little bit light, okay? But for the most part, I want that moon to stand out. I got a little too, too much ink in this right now. I squeeze a little of that out, okay? And let's see how this comes together in kind of a quick fashion, all right? I'm gonna to try to do these quickly, but I'm not going to try and rush it, okay? I just want you to show you how fast a scene can really come together, you know? A lot, a lot of people think that scenic stamping, kind of as I said in the notes section for the, uh, the previous video, a lot of people think that, you know, kind of scenic stamping is a little bit more complex than other forms of stamping, okay? Just, you know, because the variables and things like that that can go into it, but it doesn't really have to be. I mean, this scene right here was, I don't know, about three or four different images, and that's, you know, quite often people use that many types of images. Quite often in other types of imagery, when you're dealing with um, outline images, you're really having to color within the lines, aren't you? You know, and this one for me, you know, I'm just going over a lot of things. But now here's what I'm doing here that's a little bit different. Instead of going um, over something like my moon with ink, I want it to stand out. So here's my considerations, you know, I'm just gonna leave some of the rooftop light and some areas light down here, okay? But for the most part, you know, I'm not really having to stay, you know, too much within the lines or anything like that. I might kind of avoid certain, you know, areas with my darker tones, but here's the lightest color right now, and, you know, this is really coming around, and that's just one tone, okay? I just colored it over everything except the areas that I want to re remain the lightest within a scene. I like rooftops to remain nice and light, or if I had a little stream or something like that, I'd like to have it fairly light, reflecting the moonlight, okay? And... To make things easier, if you say, well, that's easy for you to say, you know what you've been doing, all you have to do is look at the imagery, and the cabin itself was kind of darker on the sides of the cabin, so all I'm doing is I'm just inking up those same areas, and the rooftop is lighter in the design, so I leave it lighter, okay? So all those types of things are already in the design itself, as opposed to being something like an outline design, where you have to kind of make all of those different types of decisions um, on your own, all right? Uh, which isn't a bad thing, um, but, you know, these scenic stamping ones, there's, you know, there's a lot more information inherent in the design itself, so we don't have to do all those different types of things um, as far as uh, things like lighting considerations. All right, I'm almost out of this aqua blue. Let's see, I'm gonna take some more. Okay, in the scene like this one, I'm just 
coloring in some of my rocks. Maybe I'll leave some of them a little bit lighter. Like I said, water. In that last one, I like to leave my water a little bit light, looking like it's kind of reflecting some of that um, starlight, I guess, in the scene. Okay. I want some of these stars to remain kind of light, so I'm just going to leave them as is. Okay. But you can see, I'm, you know, it's not really a precarious exercise here. I'm starting off with some very light tones. Okay. Now these aren't done, right? I'm just kind of putting a foundation color on because if I'm going for, I don't know if I'm going to make it, um, kind of a half an hour for six scenes here, that's, that's a lot of scenes here to kind of finish off in their entirety. So this is... I'm doing this more kind of in the spirit of a, I don't know, like a card assembly line, I guess you can say, except with completely different compositions. But this is a good way for you to see um, just how easy it can be if you make it an easy process, and that's what I always encourage you to do, or everyone to do, because that's how I do it. Um, make it into a nice, easy process, okay? It's harder to apply in a nice, smooth, blended scene, darker colors right off the bat, okay? When I'm doing something like this, you know, I, I'm kind of getting my color down with some repetition because this is such a, a light color, okay? That's why I always start light, all right? Okay, I want some of my clouds to remain nice and light, kind of like it's reflecting that moonlight, so I just leave them as is. Which ones you have to leave, it's completely up to you, it doesn't really matter, you know? You can leave that one light, this one's light right here, I could have left that one light, Who? you know what I mean? It doesn't really matter, as long as you just kind of leave some area light. And that's the same thing with the snow down here, I'm just kind of leaving some of it lighter. And... Some of it is just a touch darker, okay? So that's my foundation coat right there. And this one right here, it's more of a daytime scene, I think. I could make it night if I want to, just depending on how dark I take the sky, but let's make this cloud stand out a little bit more. Let's lay down some of this blue. some of that blue in there just so it doesn't look so kind of uh, isolated of a color within the color scheme. All right, I'll get plenty of this up in the sky and some of it in the clouds, okay? But I'll leave some of the clouds nice and light and you can see where the rooftops remaining a little bit lighter. All right, this is a lot of blue ink here that I'm using, but you can see just how fast it goes when you're using the reinker fluid. Just <laughs> there's a lot more ink just inherent in the uh, you know sponge applicated. These are stylus um, tools here that I'm using with a oval sponge tip on it. Okay, same thing. My moon. Gonna leave it a little bit lighter or the white of the page maybe and these splashing waves down here could be remain nice and light why because they are light in the design what should i color i'm going to color the rocks behind it because they are dark so make darker the dark things and keep light the lighter things or the lightest of things i guess you can say a little bit. There's a couple like open windows with the light coming out. I'll leave those areas light, okay? I'm 
All right. So these waves right here are kind of really illuminated. Maybe I'll put a little bit of tone into them. Stark white is almost too white sometimes. Okay. Let's do this one right here. Well, let's put a little bit of blue down in that water. This one's going to be quite a different color scheme, I think, you know, because the sky is a, a different color. So I'll get back to that. All right, let's switch up. Let's go on with a salvia blue. I'm going to go with my Marvies. The Memento would be an excellent one, but the Memento is a thick ink, just like that seashell ink. So I'm going to use a lot of this ink. So I'm just putting some of this down. If any of you have purchased any of those used demo pads, when you re-ink them, it takes a little while for it to absorb in there just because they haven't been re-inked in a long time. I did re-ink all the black ones, so that went out um, with those sets. So, Anyways, this is salvia blue, but the Marvy inks are a little bit thinner, so they'll penetrate the page, and I won't have to wait um, for this to dry as long, okay? For as long of a drying period. It doesn't look that much darker, does it? You know, you can see how dark it is right there than that um, Ranger Adirondack color. Maybe it's a little bit darker though. Same thing, I can go and add some of this to the lighthouse as well. darker on this one. So you see what I mean? I'm kind of working incrementally. Things are getting a little bit darker at a time, not a lot darker. And in doing so, with that type of methodology, there's a lot more control over it. Of course, I am going for uh, a little bit of speed, you know, and just in terms of kind of a challenge to myself. Okay. I want to leave a little bit of that water light down there, like it's kind of reflecting some light. Okay, if I want those clouds to remain nice and light, I'm not going to go over them. I didn't go over them too much with the lighter ink, so I'm not going to do it with a darker tone of ink. So, kind of in general, the dark you go, the less ink you use, the less coverage you get usually, unless you're just going for some real kind of super dark midnight sky or something like that. But I'm just talking about in general with most scenes. Okay, now I'm dabbing it like that just to kind of build up a little bit more color. Okay. Starting to kind of come around. All right. Starting off with some darker clouds in here, so I can go a little bit darker up there. Bring some of this tone down into my winter landscape. It's really fun kind of watching these um, scenes develop and uh, kind of the lighting scheme and kind of really what about what these scenes are going to be about develop. It doesn't develop quickly though. Um, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, taking like hours or anything like that. It's just really a matter of minutes. But when you add just each tone, each value kind of an, just incrementally darker. It's just like taking something and putting it into focus slowly. 
but we see it develop right before our eyes, and that's that's really where the fun is. Um, and it's really fun just kind of taking it into a direction that pleases your eye as the uh, creator of it. Sometimes it's, I don't know, could be logical. Like, okay, there's a shadow underneath the tree, let's make it darker. But a lot of it's just kind of more intuitive. It's, you know, it's what do you like personally, you know? So your kind of aesthetics, you know, your taste in whatever comes out. What's your favorite time of day, you know? I happen to be kind of a night person, if you can't tell already. You know, I do a lot of scenes and they're <laughs> a lot more kind of at night. I don't know. It's like a more, I don't know, the quiet time. I guess it's the time when I feel maybe I'm not thinking as much or something. And, you know, kind of go more off of feel. I think that happens with a lot of people. You know, that's why they always say, you know, doing something and whatever, sleep on it, you know? So you can kind of look at it with fresh eyes and kind of a fresh perspective instead of just going off emotion, you know? Okay. Two colors, you know, basically. Two light tones of blue. All right, let's get that moon to kind of stand out a little bit more. Let's make the area around it a little bit darker, okay? Am I staying within the lines? Not at all. Sometimes, though, staying within the lines is easier. Just because you know kind of where to stop and when to end, but on something like this, you know, there is no kind of right or wrong. It's just, for again, for me, in terms of lighting, Okay. And just as long as I keep some place kind of lighter and some place a little bit darker, you know, for for contrast reasons, um, you can kind of just do whatever you want. All right. I let things kind of develop, so you can really see this lighting scheme coming around. And that's just two colors of ink. I mean. That, you know, I mean, this scene could be done right now if you wanted it to be. You know, if you're working on it and you decided that's it. Uh, for me, that's not it. I, um, you know, I want to add more. But it could be. Uh, and that's all pretty easy to do. When you're working in these, you know, really kind of light values, you know, to begin your scene, there's... It's it's almost foolproof, you know, you can just go like that if you want to. If the color's light enough, it's not really making that big of a statement um, in terms of lighting. The lightest colors are more kind of lubricants to the page, you know, so you can add on more tones of whatever you want without it going on in a harsh kind of application. Okay. Two tones of blue. Uh... If any of you have been timing me, I don't know if I'm going to make it. But I'm, I don't know, maybe. I'm almost there, I think, with most of these scenes. The ones that are taking kind of blue. This is a number 10 Marvy Blue. Love the tone, the richness, the intensity of the color. Okay. I don't know, I, I can get more complex with my color schemes, but, uh, you know, not in the, uh, not in the half hour six card challenge, though, I don't think. But not looking bad, I think, you know. I say I kind of have light coming through here. 
And he'd say, well, how did you know to do that? You know, I wouldn't know how to do that. Well, I just did that because I made this area darker over here, and I like making kind of it the base of my subject matter is a little bit darker. I have a video on uh, kind of anchoring subject matter with the use of shadow, so just at the base of things like this, like trees and things, I just make it a little bit darker like this, and when I did that, that area right there just happened to kind of form a shadow down that way. So, um, just at the base of things, like trees, you know, stands to reason there'd be a shadow there, so. That's the way it turned out. Didn't plan that at all. Okay. All right. Coming in here. Put it over my rocks. Leave some areas a little bit lighter, right? Well, let's leave some of that water a little bit lighter. So let's put some shadows down next to these rocks. There's rocks, um, shadows, and reflections in the design itself, so it's darker in there, so I'm just making it darker. It's almost like a, you know, a, I don't know, whatever, coloring by numbers or something like that, instead of saying number 52 and, you know, 63 or whatever. Um, you just look for the shadows, look for the darker areas, and just hit it with some darker tones. Okay, keeping my light source a little bit light. In this case, it's just those stars. Okay. If you watch my video on kind of easy lighting schemes, and we're talking about an area of light right here, and an area of light down here, and just kind of bring in kind of a couple things from the edge. I'll bring this in here this way, and I'll bring this in here this way. See that? And I'll separate that moon, which is the light source, from the reflected light below by a little bit of shadow, okay? And this is getting a little bit darker. So maybe you can kind of see that relationship there. Kind of uh, light and reflected light, okay? Meaning this is light right here. And I come in here a little bit with shadow. And here's this other kind of oval down here of light, okay? So it's like two areas of light. And that makes for a really easy lighting scheme. I mean, you could use that lighting scheme and 100% of your scenes if you want to. So it just means take it from area like that, keep it light, make the outside, outside darker, and just come in here a little bit with some tone to separate those two areas. So it's like divide it in half or something. And that makes for an easy lighting scheme, especially when you're getting started in scenic stamping and lighting is, you know, something that you want to kind of employ, you know, a kind of a lighting scheme. In all scenic stamping, you really, you don't have to have, you know, a lighting scheme going on. It could just be a composition that you stamp out and you color in. Those look great as well. Everyone has different approaches, you know, to scenic stamping. Some people, you know, in this bio swap and this some, uh, one stamper does some really awesome interiors. There's always kind of a kind of a, a theme or something, like a story, you know, that's taking place within a, a scene, you know, involving some characters, and that's really cool. But you don't necessarily have like a formal light source, like in this case, it's kind of the clouds, and then you have this reflected light down here. See, I'm even coming a little bit across in here with a little bit of tone. So here's that area of light, and here's the area of reflected light here, okay? Lighthouse. Okay. This, this blue that I'm using is about a medium tone blue.
I really like this sky up here. Let's kind of come in around. All right. That half an hour is not going to happen. <laughs> but I'm not too far away. I'm, you know, getting pretty close here. Medium tone blue. Let's go to a darker tone blue. I could skip right into my Prussian blue, which is really blue. Dark, but... Uh, you know. I want to, you know, uh, do this... Uh, Quickly, but um, I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to. I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not taking a long time to do these scenes right here to kind of finish them off like this. But I'm not gonna do it with this at the sacrifice of uh, you know, kind of tonal quality. I guess you can say, right? So that's not the point, just to be fast. You know, I can just use two colors and say, all right, that's it. We want them to look good, you know? We want to kind of take them to their, whatever their, um, their maximum, I don't know, state of uh, completion in terms of doneness. and I stamped out the cloud in this blue that I'm using right now, so probably this is where this scene really kind of starts coming together a little bit more. for kind of an additional kind of whimsical element. I find it's kind of and there's something kind of like fantasy about it. But I've seen a lot of uh, I love night photographers and uh, kind of the work they do just doing long exposures and you know capturing the uh, the Milky Way with a whatever, 30 second exposure, however long it is these days. Back in the days of film, it would have been minutes, but um, um, really amazing sight and a lot of different colors within the Milky Way. So even though this is, there's an element of whimsy and kind of fantasy, it's really not too much, you know, too far different than what you can actually see. Uh, or what you can actually kind of photograph um, just with a camera these days, a digital camera. All right, this is also the another scene where I stamped out my main imagery in this color blue. So you have to go as dark or darker than your kind of darkest impressions and it's in those colors where everything really starts to come together. So in this case, it's a lot of blue for the sky and black for the uh, terrain or the composition. Okay, let's see, where's my Prussian blue? All right, 
and battery change. I guess I didn't forget to switch out my battery before, but Prussian blue is very dark. It's really penetrates the uh, the surface of the paper. I, guess, I don't know. I guess it's a there's something about it. It's a it's a thinner formula in terms of ink, and it really gets dark quickly. The thicker the ink is, kind of the more it floats on the uh, the surface of the page in some ways. But Prussian really does the job quickly. So you have to be careful if you're use, ever using it. You know, it might, something might get way too dark. Um, <laughs> Too quick. All right. Back to the Milky Way. If you like a vignette, a strong vignette, this one's a great color to kind of establish that with. in terms of the starlight. I think I just reached the half an hour point. Ooh, that's pretty dark right there. Almost too dark. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this lighter blue. I'm switching my tip right here. Okay, and I'm going to kind of bring in some of this lighter blue again. It doesn't make things lighter, but I'm making the area underneath it a little bit darker, okay? So the contrast isn't so extreme between that Prussian blue and the foundation, all right? Which were all those other colors of blue. Okay, let's go to that darker blue. It's not the Prussian blue, but and I'll just kind of bring that in there again so the Prussian blue and the background wasn't so extreme in terms of the contrast in that area. Okay, so I'm just decreasing the contrast, but build it up again. Don't just try to blend it all in with the Prussian blue, otherwise you're going to guess instead of having this one area of Prussian blue that's too dark, it'll, it's going to be this huge area of Prussian blue um, that's dark, so just build it back up from scratch. There's no point in time when you can't go back in with a lighter tone and working in there. You're not going to make things look lighter, but you can decrease the contrast, and that's what it's about in those um, areas. Okay, so I am going, I'm, this is the Prussian blue I'm working with again. All right. of this 
sky image is that it's very streaky. It's the eerie moon, okay? I have all these striations kind of in the moon itself. It's very linear. So I might go with that same spirit of streakiness and I'll streak in some colors using my sponge tip here. Let's put a little into that lighthouse, light rocks and waves stamp, and onto the lighthouse itself. Maybe not color in the whole thing, but I'll put a little bit of that tone on there. Okay. Is that nice glow coming from those rocks down here and around here? All right, I need to speed up here. not stare at uh, those color glows that these inks provide. All right, this is black. Okay, well, I'm just gonna use the same tip here, okay? I wanna do something on this composition that I'm Finishing off here. Um, I want to stamp a couple trees on there so I can create some shadows using some alcohol pens uh, because it is so much fun to do. Okay, that's the black. Same thing on this one. Kind of four corners, kind of a vignette. Creation. It already is a little bit of a vignette, but just not in black. I wouldn't do a vignette in black if it wasn't, you know, kind of dark on the outside edge. It's, again, it's kind of, well, incrementally a little bit darker. So I've kind of taken it to black. And that area, go along the water's edge, right along the uh, water's edge where it's darker, I can make it a little bit darker. Okay. kind of like a color assembly line. All these compositions are very different, but as far as coloring goes and lighting, it's, it's definitely an assembly line here. But I'm not really bored with anyone, you know, doing this this way because Every composition is different. I don't know that I'd want to, you know, do 30 of the exact same Christmas card or something like that, where it's, where it's the exact same composition. I guess if I had to, I could, but uh, 
it wouldn't be my preference. If I did something like that, I would probably, I don't know, subconsciously do something a little bit different with each one, you know, so that it's not quite so identical. Okay. Lighting right there. All right. Lighthouse. Ooh, this is the color. With some of these ones, I, I can just see it, you know, I'll add a certain color and it's like, ah, now the scenes kind of really come together. And that's, for this one, it's black here. Probably because the lighthouse is such a solid block of it. Well, the rocks and wave stamp is very solid in terms of the uh, you know, surface on there too. So because I stand in black, this black is really contributing a great deal to the uh, kind of incorporation of all the images in fully, you know, in terms of the, uh, the tone here. Otherwise, it was really kind of heavily bottom weighted down there. So I'm just kind of bringing in some extra tone in here um, to kind of, I wouldn't say balance the scene out, but maybe kind of just cap it off at the top, you know, and the bottom too, and then that kind of stronger vignette, have a little tone on my lighthouse. Watch out for your windows and lightest areas, of course. kind of have this like this, okay, as opposed to this. Just so I can get right up to that edge, that bottom edge of the, uh, the lighthouse design. I mean, not lighthouse, but the, uh, the water mill. Okay. There we go. All right. Blue tones done. That was a lot of blue. Now, let's add a little bit of variation. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the Let's take a look at this um, Lakeside Cove um, scene. Let's see, I thought I grabbed a new 59 Rose Marie. I need to do that out of some of those demo stamp pads that I have. But purple's right in here. Let's go in and add a little bit of pink into here. Also pink and blue, of course, kind of overlap to form a violet of sorts, depending on how dark the blue is. This is a very light pink, but I can introduce some of that hue into my scene. Add some of these rocks, make it a little bit more violet. down here if it was moonlight, but just to kind of tweak your scene a little bit by 
adding a different hue, okay, by adding a little bit of green, we're kind of creating a little bit of a blue green as well, okay, that's kind of fun. See how it's kind of glowing down here just by adding another kind of analogous color. All right, this one right here, I don't know, let's try to make that a little bit of that blue glow a little bit with this slightly warm tinge of green. I don't want it to be green down here, but you know, it wouldn't hurt to make it glow a little bit. I'm just using a very pale bit of green on here, but see that? It's a little bit, it was kind of bright to begin with, but there's a little bit of green in here. Um, here, no green. <laughs> this one could use a little bit. I don't know, I kind of like it as is though. All right, now let's take a look. We have some other color schemes to use in here. All right, now just like I did for um, the blue tones, I kind of squeezed out some uh, peach bellini, which is, again, it's like a, a really pale orange tone, okay? That doesn't look that pale there, but um, it's kind of darker, but like I said, any of the uh, kind of distress inks would be kind of good for this purpose. Let's bring some of this down into these rocks. I always tend to think that the colors of the sky, brilliant tones of sunset and whatnot, are reflected in the landscape below, especially in things like, you know, water, okay? So I'm bringing some of that down there, and I'm retaining some of the lightness of my sky and water, okay? All right, now I have plenty <laughs> of ink. Well, I don't know, maybe I put too much ink in this. But let's go into our water mill here and add a little bit of color to it. Where do you color and where do you leave it as is? Well, again, on structures, like on the side of it, in the design itself, I have quite a bit of uh, value by adding dots, but I like to keep my rooftops a little bit lighter. See, that makes it a lot more three-dimensional, right? But sometimes the top is just too stark white. So maybe I'll get a little of this color on there, okay? Don't tone it all out, though, okay? Put a couple streaks up there, like so. So that is that. Let's go on with a darker tone. Brown. You can use a darker distress ink if you have it. A lot of people have, you know, multiple values of I don't know, distress inks. It's because they're great. But just use a darker one if you don't have like this Marvy Brown. Oh, there's a memento one too, like that potter's clay would be a good one. Okay. Let's bring some pink into the scene. Kind of a, a sky, I did use pink in the impression of that alto cumulus sky. I'm really starting to leave uh, fingerprints everywhere. Look at my fingers. Someone said, uh, I know in a lot of my scenes I don't get like that, but I'm not usually coloring six scenes with a ton of ink, you know. But just to come to show you, the fingers are inky. Quite inky. Okay, um, let's see. Let's go for a much more brilliant light. Uh, oh, okay, here. 
Let me just, for the sake of this, I'll like use this mustard seed. Just so I am using some distressing. I keep talking about them in this video. This is mustard seed. They're they're yellow. Okay. Really warmed it up, didn't it? of some sort. This terracotta. Terracotta. Um, let me see what this pink will look like. This is the same pink that I used in that Alto Cumulus Sky image, along with brown. Ooh, pretty strong statement. It's pretty dark, so I'll be careful about my use of it. Kind of applying it in a very light touch. Fairly bold color. I often kind of achieve kind of bold color schemes, but <laughs> I don't, the application process of it is not very bold, you know, because I just kind of. I work up to it very incrementally, and then in the end result, it just looks quite vibrant, bold, and whatnot. But uh, I don't know, that one really changed a lot when I uh, added it, so kind of have to be a little bit careful about that. All right, um, I'm looking for my dark brown. It's black. Um, I don't see my dark brown. It's the number 18 Marvy. I'll use the rich cocoa instead from Memento. Eh, pretty good. It's kind of a smoky, deep tone, kind of. I am running it over all these other colors that so looks really deep and vibrant and rich because it is transparent and the colors underneath are showing through, but it's a good it's a good brown though. As are really all the memento wings. They're really good. And I thought, if I'm not mistaken, they are fade proof, I guess. It's hard for me to believe that any dye based ink is fade proof, but they're not super bright like a lot of the Marvies, and I find that really bright colors can potentially fade faster. You know how I know that? I've never done a test, but I've sent like cards to people, friends, and family. <laughs> And sometimes I walk in and, you know, there's those cards are still kind of up on the refrigerator, um, you know, a year later, two years later, 
five years later, and I can see, I, and then I observe a nice thing, okay, the pinks like, kind of disappeared really fast, you know, they were really bright. The blues seem to be a little bit, you know, not color fast, but kind of a little bit more resist, resilient, or not resilient, but resistant to fading than some other tones, okay? All right, let's go in here. Let's add some tone on the watermill brown. Adding a little bit of variation to it. Making it look a little bit more rustic, or trying to. Look at that big fingerprint I put there. Am I worried about it? Not at all. Okay, let's see here. All right, I'm <laughs> I'm way off the pace. Maybe if I would have said, okay, I'm gonna finish these off in an hour, it would have taken me an hour and a half. But saying I'm gonna try to do it in half an hour, I'm, I might end up doing it in an hour. Okay, let's take a look at these right now. And uh, let's see how they look. Okay, not too bad. Nice and bright and vibrant and deep and rich, I think, in terms of their finish. Um, eh, a couple of these can use a little bit more um, kind of black on the surrounding area. I did want to do something on this scene, I think it could use something. It's a little bit boring right now in terms of the composition. So I'm gonna do that on this scene. I'm gonna add a, something to it right now as, as opposed to waiting until um, the next video. All right, I have grabbed my leafless pine tree. Let's get these things out of the way here. All right. This is my leafless pine, okay? I've put, now this is a really large block, so I've put these just as stabilizers here on the side. So when I ink this up and I stamp it, I don't rock it and accidentally stick this uh, tack and peel to my paper because it it's really kind of uh, tacky, just like the name would imply. All right. I think a couple of these trees would look, I don't know, quite dramatic in the scene. So let's see. Tell you what, I'm gonna mask off some of that. I, I think that trunk will come to a, uh, you know, into that uh, water or snow to abruptly, I guess you can say. So I'm gonna do this. I'm just having it go off the page, okay? I want these things to, like tall trees kind of in the foreground. All right, so one tree and a little bit more ink on that black pad. Oh, 
these are my two black pads right here. I'm just kind of patting it down. How about another one here in the foreground, like it's a little bit closer to us? Repetition of imagery. Okay, created a little bit of depth there, right? And naturally, it's very much right side weighted, visually weighted. So I'm going to put another one on this side. Like so. Okay. Tell you what, let's do something like this. Masking off. It's like, like a corridor, doesn't it? All right, that looks good as is. Uh, let me add a little bit of vignetting on this. I have to be careful because those that tree stamp is quite wet. I don't want to smear all over the place. Okay, something like that. All right. Um, let's see what we have here. In terms of how much of these are kind of finished off with some color, okay? In terms of value, color, saturation, intensity, all that fun stuff. Okay. I have ink pads everywhere on my desk. All right. Well, they look better than they did an hour ago. I think. And... I think they look pretty good um, in terms of uh, their finish and saturation. Sorry for the glare. Let's take a look at that. All right. So... What do we see here? An area of light <laughs> and an area of light like that. Light and light down there. It's much smaller though, right? But it's kind of separated. Here's an area of light. I mean, this is a dark stamp up here, but it's darker around here. And see how it comes in here with the shadow? I have a little area of light down here. This one, uh, I don't know. I guess you can say it's light up there and it gets darker throughout here, but you know, say it gets light down there. Light, kind of light there at the cabin, but light down here, separated by shadow. Light separated by shadow, right? Light down here. See, it's the exact same thing every time. Light, 
shadow, light. And that makes it easy. Just kind of make your perimeters darker. Come in here a little bit somewhere, depending on the, you know, the, the composition. And you can have this lighting scheme going on. But, all right, I took longer than I thought I was going to, or, that, you know, as far as my goal went. But six cards, and I did the compositions. The compositions were already stamped, but that's not too bad, I think. You know, 10 minutes a card, you know? And we had one that was completely different color scheme, so that took a while. And uh, like doing this um, water mill here. The water mill needs something. It needs a little bit of, you know, kind of zip, you know, into it. It's it's kind of anemic looking. It needs another layer of tone or something like that. But um, um, some pens or something like that would help out. Now, I have finished these in terms of the coloring schemes for the most part, okay? I think it can use, they can all use a little bit of detailing, maybe some pen, uh, paint pen, gel pen treatments, okay? But I think I'm going to do that in another video, um, and we'll just keep this one uh, as a representation of, you know, how to color it, um, some different schemes, and how to define a light source. And uh, we'll get into the use of the highlighting types of um, details and pigment ink applications for the next video, okay? This could even use a little bit of splatter paint down maybe on both of these ones right here. I don't know, maybe even up in the sky there. Maybe I'll do a little bit of that. Maybe we'll do three different treatments of um, the scenes. Um, uh, okay, I had that fingerprint there. I forgot. Hold. Okay. What to do in the event of a fingerprint? And my fingers really are quite inky this time around. Uh, where'd my black pad go? Who ever said landscape stamping, scenic stamping isn't the most forgiving form of card making there could possibly be, you know? Well, if they did say that, they didn't, you know, they weren't thinking of, uh, just covering something up, right? And having it look just fine, right? So we're standing underneath a tree. Now we are. <laughs> and I think it looks even better. I don't think I'm just rationalizing it either. I think that looks pretty good. Right? I don't know, doesn't it look more complete to you? And it's also the smudgy finger cover upper. How about some birds in there too? Like that. The watermill still needs a little bit of something, but that looks much better to me. Okay, so. Easy stuff, I hope you can see that. If you just take things nice and slow, things look pretty good, you know, to me. In terms of um, how these scenes looked, just with those first two colors, you know. It was lighter, kind of in a more pastel finish, you know, having them fairly light, but taking them kind of darker, you know, to that kind of vignette type of uh, look. I think it's a little bit more dramatic, maybe, you know, in terms of uh, potential, in terms of like kind of having an evocative, kind of emotional, heavier content. Not that everything seen has to be that way, but um, I don't know, taking them all the way through their full value scheme within the color scheme, I think looks pretty good. And, uh, when I get to the next video and I add in those little kind of detailing finishes, those detailing finishes will stand out even more. Not that it always has to stand out, it could be more subtle, but 
for the sake of this video, you know, you'll see how those type of, types of little effects really uh, come into play and can enhance a card even more than just the color. All right. So anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the finishing off of these scenes. It was really... When I do a composition, it feels... <laughs> I really feel like finishing them off, and with these ones here, I really liked all the different compositions, so as I looked at them even more, I was thinking about what I could do with them, and kind of wondering what they would look like in the end result, and uh, as far as the coloring goes, I know what they look like now. The spirit of them is kind of set now, and for me, kind of adding in those little flourishes are really going to be a lot of fun, and I really enjoy doing those types of things, so... I'll do that in the next video, and we'll see what it comes out like. And, uh, I don't know, if you're doing kind of a stamp along with any one of these videos, or any one of these scenes right here, and if you have a kind of a white gel pen or uh, some white pigment ink, you might want to pull that out and uh, get it ready for the next video, where I uh, add it into uh, certain areas here and there. Thanks for watching, and thanks as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel.